two-time winners from 12 FA Cup finals, Manchester United met this year's final opponents, Everton, at Wembley in 1985, when a goal from Norman Whiteside secured the trophy for United in extra time. United, like Everton, were drawn at home in three of the rounds leading up to the semi-final at Villa Park, a win over Crystal Palace coming after a replay. Their away tie in round three at Sheffield United was never going to be easy. Teams managed by Dave Bassett will always be tough opposition. Sheffield, one of the favourites for promotion from the first division, coped with the better swirling wind and soon had Schmeichel in action. He didn't realise Blake, he wasn't offside, Martin. He had a look and he checked his run. And he just felt, had he spun and run at the ball, he would have got there before Schmeichel. And it was fair. They impressed Sheffield United when they were on tour in Australia. Rogers. Rogers, it's a lovely touch for Blake. They can't follow it in. Schmeichel right back on the line. The final touch towards the goal came from Hodges. Well, this is unlucky. There's shades of offside there against Whitehouse. But Blake gets that well. I thought the wind was just going to take it in there. They clear it and hits Hodges. And there's the day. And you say goalkeepers need luck sometimes, Mark. Well, he certainly enjoyed his fair share of this moment, Peter Schmeichel. Particularly at that moment. Straight into his arm. Vert. It's quick. Trying to get into a stride here. A link up with Blake. Rogers round the outside. Fiat's continued his run into the centre. Down goes Blake. Big appeals for a penalty from Sheffield United. Not given by Robbie Hartley. Run to the referee. I'll tell you what, man, I'd like to see that again. As he knocks it down, he gets in front of Steve Bruce. There's his touch. There's Bruce on the knee. You can see that quite clearly. And I think Manchester United get lucky there. That's a penalty in my book. Cantona. Here's Butt. Well, there's a fiery side to Mickey Butt's nature, and there's a fiery it's side to the cup tie now. Trouble here. Charlie Hartfield's in trouble. He's off, Mark. Yeah. Hartfield has a swing at Cantona. Crazy. Whether he reacted to something the Frenchman did. But it's a red card, Hartfield's the one. I'm sure it's Charlie Hartfield. I'm sure it's the four. Hartfield is going off. You can't do that, you can't lift your hands and strike an opponent. That's what Hartfield's guilty of. It's Bami, they've had a good opening 15 minutes. It's the tackle initially that incenses everyone. And Nicky Buck. I don't think it's that one there, the tackle goes in there, and it's this one here, there. Now it's what happens from now. There yeah. it is, the right in front of the referee. Keen, able to turn. Well, McClare's got gigs in plenty of space on the left. Hughes and Cantona and Keen in the middle. Oh, against the post, from Mark Hughes. Now that was a super header from Hughes. It really was. Beautifully guided. Irwin. Diggs. Well, someone had to get to him, and it was Paul Rogers. Another corner. Five minutes left in the first half. There's Steve Bruce coming in the back post before it is it's Giggs. Giggs. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is unlucky. He just tries to direct it, Ryan Giggs. It's at a tight angle, any touch from anyone. And that's a goal. White House. Need some support now. Hodges, Rogers. Back by 
Keane immediately thinking of the counter-attack. Roy Keane! Oh, what a strike. What a strike. Won't hit many better than that. They backed off, they backed off. He wins the ball. Look how far up the pitch he is. He wins it off Glenn Hodges there and they back off. You see Nielsen. And that's natural when you men short. There's movement all around Roy Keane. He's got time to look. And well, he unleashes that. And I'm not so sure Alan Kelly would have gone across to that had that been on target. Maybe he would. Veert. Bustled out of it by Sharp. Keane could go on and have a crack here. He's played it for Butt. Cantona! Oh, astonishing save! The goal seemed there for the taking. Cantona seemed to set off for the celebrations. And it stayed out. Oh, that's an absolutely magnificent save from the goalkeeper. I, like you, thought that's it. They've finally broken them down. It's goals. Into the action straight away. Key. Hughes. But Cantona Hughes King did well then It's Mark Hughes They finally made one count And Hughes Trying to make history repeat itself here He got the winner a year ago and he's put Manchester United in prime position to win again at Bramall Lane in the third round of the FA Cup. Oh, it's a lovely ball from Giggs, Mark, no. It's right into the danger area. Hughes gets himself between the, the two centre-backs. And as it drops to him, well, that's a very confident header into the corner. They've knocked and knocked here at Manchester United in the second half. And finally the door's open. Whitehouse and they've got Scott they've got Blake in the centre and they've got a corner without Hodges Starbuck has gone across to take it everyone back to Manchester United except Giggs well Gale Scott, I think it was, going for the same ball then. Starbuck puts it back in again. Away by Bruce. Hughes. There's a break on here. Cantona is free. Giggs has seen him. He's found him. Cantona looks for the chip. Oh, exquisitely done. Game, set, match. Wonderful, wonderful piece of finishing from Eric Cantona. And it's the type of thing they do so often. One minute they're defending a corner. And in an instant they're at the other end of the pitch. And they've got themselves a goal. It's a good ball from Giggs again. He waits until it opens up for him. And he rolls a simple pass to Cantona. He knows exactly what he wants to do. And not even the gales can affect it. Quality and the accuracy of Cantona's chip. It's a beautiful finish. Quite beautiful. Starbuck. It. It's behind from Gage. And he's got to explain it all to Andy Gray in the boot room. Well, I think the 13th minute will be a big part of that, Martin. Well, history has repeated itself for Manchester United. Their cup run starts with a win at Bramall Lane, just as it did with it a year ago with a Mark Hughes goal then as now and a second a collector's item even by Cantona's standards and of course they will hope Manchester United that it will lead to the trophy that they currently hold once again so the brilliance of Cantona sealing the win over the battling Sheffield team but those goals not coming until the last 10 minutes the cup holders were at home to Wrexham in round 4 but were without Eric Cantona his actions in that now infamous incident at Crystal Palace were quickly condemned by the club, who issued this statement. 
Manchester United has today suspended Eric Cantona from all first team matches for the remainder of the 1994 stroke 95 season. So Eric's idle, but there's still a strong Gallic flavour around Old Trafford. The Welsh Dragon was primed to fan the flames of controversy surrounding Manchester United, and without Cole and Hughes, as well as Cantona, the Reds looked as though they might lack a little devil up front. His name was on everyone's lips. Wrexham fans chanted au revoir, Cantona. The United supporters sang for his return. Wrexham took just nine minutes to give the impression that United's torrid week was far from over. Kieran Durkin slipping in for the kill and Wrexham's first ever goal against Manchester United. They'd met four times previously. Durkin, back from a spell in New Zealand, had scored one of the goals which had deposited Ipswich out of the cup in round three. Perhaps the goal came too soon for Wrexham. It galvanised United, and the equaliser came eight minutes later. The ball teed up for Dennis Irwin to drive it home. The goal settled United down. Gary Pallister's intervention gave Irwin a clear sight of goal and Wrexham's brief flirtation with leading the cup holders on their own ground had been snatched away. United were now in their stride, Cantona's storming of the barrier at the Palace a receding memory for the Old Trafford faithful and Ryan Giggs swept the ball home for the second before the half hour. The chance was set up by teenager Philip Neville, making his debut at left-back, another chip off the old block-busting United youth system. United now had the dragon by the tail, and no one will come closer to a debut goal than Neville, just a centimetre away from starting his career with the kind of strike a certain exiled Frenchman would have been proud of. Wrexham had come with 7,000 supporters and nothing to lose, and to their credit, they never let United take anything for granted. Pallister and Schmeichel having a gentle set too. At half time, with Wrexham still in the match, the question remained was there life after Cantona? United answered that with a vengeance. Gary Pallister planting a header against the crossbar from a corner by Ryan Giggs. And Roy Keane joined in the action as United went for the Dragons' jugular. Perhaps Keane, with a clear sight of goal, should have done better. But Wrexham refused to be counted out. Kieran Durkin had another chance to go for glory. But this time, the magic just wasn't on hand. Soon after that, United finally put the leash on the underdogs. Note the killer pass from Gary Pallister inside the box. Brian McClare choosing his spot with radar precision to pierce the Wrexham defence. And 3-1 for Manchester United. The game was up for the Welsh. They were determined to go down fighting, but there's no answer to that kind of accuracy. Again, Brian Flynn's boys march back into the attack, and Peter Schmeichel had to produce international form to keep them out. Barry Hunter forcing the first save. Steve Watkin, the hero of the win two years ago over Arsenal, denied from the corner. Manchester United extended their lead with a penalty. Paul Ince storming into the fray, in the football sense of course. Wrexham skipper Tony Humes is the guilty man in this situation. No arguments with the decision. Ince had nicked the ball away. And from the spot, Dennis Irwin stepped up for his second goal of the match. It's normally Cantona's job, but the Irishman proves to be a pretty able deputy. Skipper Tony Humes only managed to serve a two-game suspension by playing a hastily rearranged game in the snow this week. He may have regretted that decision when his deflection gave United their fifth goal. Five goals for United, all without the combined multi-million pound talents of Eric Cantona, Andy Cole and Mark Hughes. Although the fairy tale was over for Wrexham, they did have the last word. Substitute Jonathan Cross hammering the ball home over the surprise Schmeichel. The shot gets a bit of topspin from a David May deflection to help it on its way, but Wrexham are on their way out. United are on the road again. Alex Ferguson has spent an agonising week at Old Trafford. Just playing football again must have been a relief. The first 90 minutes without Cantona successfully negotiated. Delight all round at United at the final whistle. And for Wrexham, well they bow out in style. Their attacking philosophy a credit to the club and its supporters. 
Manchester United 5, Wrexham 2. The only way if we can achieve anything at Old Trafford is to come and attack them. And uh, I had a feeling we'd score. Uh, and it was, I think, we're the only team, well, not come Forest came here and scored two goals, and we're the only other side to come to Old Trafford this season and score two goals. So we've got to take something from that. Wrexham playing their part in an entertaining match. And now it's another tough Yorkshire side as Leeds visit Old Trafford in round five. Leeds had won 2-1 at Elland Road in the Premiership back in November and would Manchester United miss their multi-million pound man who had scored in their two previous Premiership matches. Andy Cole makes his way to his seat in the stand. It's a cup campaign he'll have to sit and watch for Manchester United. Cup tied of course. Referee Mike Reid from Birmingham gets us underway. Dennis Irwin. Looking for Hughes as he makes his return into a typically rombustious piece of action early on with David Weatherall. I reckon he's about 80% fit, Hughes. Irwin with the free kick behind for a corner awkward one for the Leeds defence to deal with I think it was Noel Whelan getting back and making that header Giggs will take it looking for Bruce and Steve Bruce has scored a sensational start 60 seconds on the clock and Manchester United lead Leeds United by a goal to nil Steve Bruce rising high and powering it in it was a beautifully delivered corner and the United skipper gets his second goal of the campaign. And what a start to this game. Well, McClare was doing all the harrying there. scored with their first corner of the game from the other side Kings will take this one as well Gary Speed with a header behind United are two up it's Brian McClare a dream start for the holders they've had three quarters they've scored from two beautifully delivered again whipped in the little flick on And expertly taken by McClare. Hughes wins that one. Giggs is he in? Well, it was quite a good chance, in fact. Just got in front of the Leeds defence. for Giggs Gary Kelly's there well Manchester United just kept possession almost at will then before launching the attack it was almost continental Giggs again with the corner looking for Ince 
straight into John Lukic in the end Pallister up in front of Ince in fact straight at the keeper Ince in charge in the air Harry Kelly with the interception though Devin White's making the run from McAllister's pass. He's won the free kick. Whelan. Masinga. Just opened up momentarily for him. Worthington. Dorigo, he's looking for Yaboa. Schmeichel had to get down and fast. So Yaboa announces himself as a threat already in this game. It's a good header. David White by well, John Lukic facing an awkward situation then four men in the wall to either side Giggs standing over the ball Irwin and Kanchelskis there too He's urging Noel Whelan it is on the right to get back and Chelskis. Off the bar, Luke has saved it. Keen. Breathtaking stuff. Kanchelskis with the initial shot. Lukic parried it under the crossbar. And that's how close Manchester United were from taking a 3-0 lead. run ahead this is Ince and now for Kanchelskis looking for Hughes Mark Hughes 3-1 to Manchester United his first game back after injury an Old Trafford favourite and he marks his return with a superb taken goal he made it look so easy Kanchelski is striking terror into the heart of the Leeds defence and back where it came from and into the back of the net from a similar situation goes himself Giggs sets it up it's well Leeds with their defence stretched 
to the limit. Somehow survived. Too hot to handle for John Lucas, that one. They're loving it, aren't they? Pemberton has illegally knocked Mark Hughes to the ground. McClare's quick free kick for Giggs. Kanchelskis is the only man anywhere near the middle. Giggs on his own. Kanchelskis! Well, it was a bad miss. Giggs is reveling in this afternoon now. Did everything right. Kachowskis, unfortunately, didn't. Speed for McAllister. Schmeichel down safely. And what is probably a parting shot from Gary McAllister with the full time whistle. Only a matter of seconds away. And there it goes. Manchester United go into the quarterfinals. The holders' grip on the FA Cup is firm. They've beaten Leeds United by three goals to one. Mark Hughes got the third in the second half after Tony Yaboa who dragged Leeds back only 2-1 down those early goals from Steve Bruce and Brian McClare had put Manchester United in the driving seat and they were not to be shaken out of it it's Manchester United to go into the last leg they've beaten Leeds by three goals to one two goals in the first five minutes the key into the sixth round at Old Trafford where a warm welcome awaited the former United favourite Ray Wilkins and his Queen's Park Rangers side Wilkins, who served United for five years between 79 and 85, was an FA Cup winner with them in 1983 and he would have been impressed by the changes at the ground over ten years. A super stadium. Thanks for Gary Neville. And Charles Giss. And he's beaten two. Ross and Holloway. Ross has a second bite. Manchester United still have the ball lead, but there was a foul. Dermot Gallagher wanting the game to go on. Chelskis with the cross, first to it was Ryan Giggs. Rangers were a bit on the back foot then and didn't cover the movement towards the near post. Difficult chance though for Giggs, wasn't easy. You see Danny Maddox, it caught a little bit ball watching. Giggs timed his run to perfection. But all he can do when the ball arrived was stab it. It was a difficult ball to take control of. It had to be first time, it had to be instinctive, that's what it was. And it almost tested the goalkeeper. Wonderful football all round, both attacking and defensively. Empey. Well, just when we were beginning to think they were going to get through the first 20 minutes, which is bound to be a target for Ray Wilkins without anything up toward happening at the back. Sharp sped into the area then. But Roberts blocked. Was played forward typically by Wilson, he put up his hand and apologised to Ferdinand straight away, he was concerned in getting the ball out of his own half, but not really concerned about whether anyone would be able to receive it. Hughes. For Giggs, Sharp goes outside him, and gets the better of Barkley, Lee Sharp, right now to Manchester United, halfway through the first half. played in the air Martin Alan McDonald will fancy his chances of dominating Mark Hughes but what Mark Hughes does very well he backed off against them and he brought it down so then they were in trouble right at the edge of the box he got a little bit of luck 
but it was finished so well by Lee Sharp. Really drills it into the far corner. We get a little bit of luck in there. Barsley doesn't quite clear it, but that's a great finish. Well, Lee Sharp, who came back from a lengthy injury absence in the third round at Sheffield United, makes a contribution here in the sixth round against Queen's Park Rangers. And here's Giggs. There's no one up with him. Cole is wearing his lucky hat, he's sitting in the same seat that he occupied in the last two rounds, cup tied of course, yeah, maybe a little bit bashful there knowing the camera's on him, so even when you're not eligible to play you can still be part of the superstitions and uh, feel that you're doing your bit. Three surrounding it, the odds of Queen's Park Rangers favour, and it's panned out that way, this is Brevet, Ferdinand. Well, there was plenty of power in the shot, he was pressed as he released it. Well, he earned that chance by pressing that man. Paul Lynch in the centre of midfield, three men around him. Barker really bit into the tackle and away they went. And at last he sprang Les with facing the goal, 20 yards out. He could really tuck them in from that sort of end, not frightened to have a goal. Manchester United found out earlier in the season in the league match from even further out. He didn't quite catch it. Conceded their first goal in the FA Cup this season. It was scored by Lee Sharp. Mark Hughes helped set it up. Coming down to the halfway line for the substitution to be properly orchestrated. Ryan Giggs is the player who will not be involved in the second half. It's quite a surprise that Keane has been available today. He had to convince Alec Ferguson this morning that he'd recovered from this hamstring strain that saw him come off in the 9-0 demolition of Ipswich last weekend. So it's Keane for Giggs. It's 1-0 Manchester United as the second half starts here. Impey. On the face of it, Matt, you'd think that maybe they'd push Brian McClare up front with Mark Hughes, but I think the movement's so good from the midfield area. I think what they're going to do second half. Roy Keane will play midfield, I feel sure about that. But so will McClare, and they'll just say to Sparky, you play up front, we'll get plenty of runners around you. Nick Collins will tell us why there's been a change. Yeah, I'm afraid it's an injury to Ryan Giggs, that's why. A calf injury. Keane, very nearly coming in. <laughs> in sensational fashion calf injury for Ryan Giggs Roy Keane on a runner from midfield par excellence he destroyed Queen's Park Rangers down at Loftus Road in the end in December with his movement from that part of the pitch and he very nearly put this cup tie beyond redress you would feel a second goal Impey have to do a, a lot on the ball the odds were against him United already share the record for lifting the world famous trophy they've done it eight times the same as Tottenham with 12 appearances in the final also a landmark of the competition equal only by Arsenal scenting FA Cup glory again and what they've got here is a very competitive uh, opposition in the shape of Queen's Park Rangers maybe have seen a moment of suicide here they've been disciplined they've defended the whistle of God I think in Manchester United's favour he's given a free kick against Danny Maddox he looks very really calm there McGarth and here's the problem we've talked about it earlier in the goal use backs into players you know that's always difficult for a referee 6 or 1 Danny Maddox feels that Mark Hughes had a little nudge at him there Sharp is there Kachelskis as well 
Queen's Park Rangers, as you'd expect, have pulled everyone back. Roberts trying to peer wide of the wall to see it. Irwin takes it, he claps it, it's in the corner, it's 2-0 to Manchester United. Dennis Irwin, with his speciality, a swerving free kick, a smile from the manager. And United will feel they're well on the way into the semi-final. The Queen's Park Rangers are not best pleased, they go to the referee. We do, Martin, but I don't think they've got much cause. Look at the rocks. He was frightened to death, I think, Tony Roberts. Of Dennis Irwin chipping this into the opposite corner. And I think he won a battle of wills there, Dennis Irwin. The goalkeeper edged to his right a little bit. And Irwin bend, and bent into the corner that he left vacated. It's a super free kick. Wilson. Michael has contributed to this Manchester United performance here because had it been 2-1 uh, a second or two ago it would have been set up for a grandstand finish and Les Ferdinand robbed of a goal by the diving day stuck at it second half, I'd say that for Queen's Park Rangers, Mark, but no heads have dropped, they've kept plugging away, plugging away, but I have felt that since Dennis Irwin's second goal, it was something of a, well, a long job, really. Well, the double, double is still alive, the FA Cup holders stride into the semi-final, Dennis Irwin's goal, the second of the game, secured it really early in the second half from a fabulous free kick, and Old Trafford is the end of this particular road for Queen's Park Rangers. So into the semi-final, one match away from Wembley and the end of the road. Opponents Crystal Palace have beaten Wolves 4-1 in a sixth round replay to claim their place. Crystal Palace will be hoping that this is to be a weekend for the outsider. Well, they may be just slightly concerned that uh, Crystal Spirit didn't quite stay the distance at entry. They attack the goal to our right. North End plays host to their supporters so thereby defended by uh, Peter Schmeichel early corner first challenge between Chris Armstrong and Roy Keane Manchester United wearing their there I say it Sheffield Wednesday strip Eric Young is forward in the box pitcher who tried the shot not quite as successful as his one at Molyneux John Salako the free kick is to Manchester United Hughes Giggs Lee Sharp has made a really good run and Nigel Martin just grabbing it in time from the feet of David Beckham really good run by Lee Sharp he covered two thirds of the field there he is at the top of the picture that's just the end of his run tried to pull it back and Martin just got there ahead of Beckham some concern obviously about a broken finger Alan Smith Ferguson alongside his chairman in the stand. Solako to deliver the long one. Dowry on the near edge of the six yard area. It's a teaser. And he's brushed off the crossbar by Schmeichel. Solako at the back. And Dowry! man 
they brought from Southampton. Gets the opening goal. That was palmed away, not particularly well, by Schmeichel. He will now wish he'd put it over the crossbar. Return back by Armstrong. The header in by Salako. The nod over the line from Ian Dowie. Alec Ferguson looking a little agitated. Referee has allowed two minutes of stoppage time. Dowie. Armstrong waits and he's not well marked. And the last incident of the half is at the end where Ian Dowie scored the one goal in the 33rd minute which puts Alan Smith's side into the lead Wembley that little bit closer oh, one goal was enough to decide the only previous FA Cup tie between these two sides in the final of 1990 it came in the replay after a three all draw Young clears the first Manchester United attack they haven't lost at this stage of an FA Cup competition since 1970 when they lost in a third match to Leeds United. Here's McClare, good block by Young, feel for handball against Pitcher. Certainly inadvertent if it was hands. Martin can't get there, but it's wide. But. Sharp termination from Halton, but on this occasion not enough. Roy Keane, Neville, everything now to his left. Shaw, Ince, forced across by Southgate, foul by Southgate. Opportunity perhaps for Dennis Irwin. correct free kick against the uh, Crystal Palace captain Irwin has placed the ball Giggs is alongside it Martin is happy that the left side of his goal from his viewpoint is covered could be Irwin one way or Giggs the other it's Irwin oh it's a brilliant goal wasn't much room to put it but he found the gap Nigel Martin beaten it got a deflection of Houghton watch the deflection here Houghton got up I have to say I can never understand why small players are put in the middle of a wall that's what the goal meant to Alec Ferguson. Southgate. Salaka. It's a casual one from Butt. Extra time. David Ellery, like everyone else, I have to wait for an extra half an hour at least. Teams back as they were at the start of the match. Crystal Palace playing left to right. Ince, sending sharp on his way for the first attack of the half. Send it to his right. Oh! Brian McClare. Lee Sharp. Stretch by McClare. Close to his third goal of the campaign. Here's Armstrong.
Still Armstrong. Yes! But he's threatened to make his pace count and his manager almost matching that pace. And finally, Chris Armstrong does come up with the goods to their obvious delight. Palace in the lead for the second time. For a moment, it looked as though Keane would get to him. It bubbled a bit, but he got it over the goalkeeper this time. And Crystal Palace lead by two to one. Leclerc. True that one man doesn't make a team, but one man can certainly change the character of a team and give it added invention. Pallister! He doesn't get many, but he's got a crucial one in this semi final. Takes his season's tally to, for him, a mind boggling three. Just beat everybody as he nodded it to his left. 2-2. Two, two. Big smile on the face of Alec Ferguson. It would be the fairest decision if it goes to a replay. Cross beats everybody. And a replay next Wednesday it will be. Handshake from uh, Alan Smith to everybody you can find finally finds Alec Ferguson they will come back here again after a 2-2 draw Dowie putting Crystal Palace in front for the first time his goal wiped out by Dennis Irwin Armstrong putting Palace in front for a second time his goal wiped out by Gary Pallister final score except that it's not final because the replay will be needed to decide who goes to Wembley is 2-2. The replay was back at Villa Park three days later. A draw here would result in penalties to decide who goes to Wembley. The second instalment of the semi-final is underway. Here's Gordon. by picture the times of the goals reflected the shape of the first game Palace when Dowie scored have had the better of the first half of normal time United clearly superior in the second both sides scored in an evenly contested period of extra time Dowie fitness will also be a factor you feel tonight who's got the greater amount of fuel left in the tank Sharp. It's a fine ball, it troubled Richard Shaw and he did well to scrape it outside that near post. Clever ball, Mark. clever ball for the Sharp. They've certainly begun tonight Manchester United better than they did the first game. Now and Bruce comes back for Butt. Then for Giggs, fine try. It's a goal kick. That was a great straight. Great example. Straight in a difficult ball. He had to let the ball come across his body. He got really good body shape. Look at this. He steps across that ball and then hits it with Ben. Oh. Now he he thought for a moment. Then. He thought for a moment that was sneaking in, didn't he? Ryan, I think he thought that's just nipping in the bottom corner. Salaka, a little bit of space. Chance to take on Neville, perhaps. That's there to help him out. It spins away off Nicky Butt for a corner. Thought Gary Neville played John Salaka really well on Sunday. He really didn't give him much of a chance. Eric Young the best part of 25 minutes gone that's Dowie well no one ran with him 
I don't care what anyone says, that's a chance in my book. And again, well, this, he missed a very important header on Sunday. Now look, he's on no one near him, absolutely no one. Now he's one of the strongest headers of the ball. You would have him earmarked, I'm sure, before they even come out here tonight. Probably not his strongest side coming from there. Well, that would have made the header an easy one. Oh, yeah. That's a corner. Well, Mr. Palace might beware the opposing left back. It was Lee Martin in that position that won the FA Cup final in 1990 between these two clubs. A Bruce! Manchester United are in front in the semi-final for the first time and Steve Bruce marks his comeback with a thumping header past Reese Wilmot. Well, Darren Patterson's a one copy Bruce. Now watch this, the difference here is Bruce made that his. The young defender didn't attack it, now he should have done. He's caught with Bruce, they're going to attack it and you'll win it, son. He didn't do that. And I'll tell you what, Steve Bruce gave a great example of wanting to win a header. He put himself in there, look at that. Body into it, everything. And that's what made the difference. He was more determined than the man marking him. Alan Smith's always said his main priority is to retain the spot in this division. trying to unnerve Wilmot. Can you imagine, Mark, if the scoreline stays the same? How is this semi-final settled, lads? On the replacement of a contact lens. Because Ian Dewey wasn't back to mark the man he should have been. Found by Shaw. Speed of recovery wasn't enough. Dennis Irwin had timed his run well. It's a free kick. And now Ian Dowry is marking Steve Bruce. Alistair is free and it's Tuna. Well, the two centre backs have really made them pay for some poor defending. You cannot, I cannot believe for the life of me that the most dangerous man they've got gets a free header, he loses Stata like it to be fair brilliantly that's a superb one, worthy of the best strikers in the game you watch the way he takes him forward, skips in behind him and that's a towering header, it really was look at that, he's pulled behind Gareth Southgate lost him totally well, I've done him an injustice, that was super play from Pallister fantastic run and a great header Player who usually leaves it really to Steve Bruce to gain the honours at the set pieces. He's getting the taste. Yeah. Well, no Cole, no Cantona, no Kanchelskis with it. Matters not when you've got committed defenders like Steve Bruce who will go upfield and butt the ball into the opponent's net. And Gary Pallister following the example. And Manchester United go off here at half time in very good shape indeed. Nice he stood off by Armstrong. Southgate. Well, Roy Keane has lit the fuse here and a real explosion of emotion. One or two Manchester United players, notably Irwin, believing that Southgate made more of that than was necessary Southgate seemed to me to expect Keane to go over the top well, on a night when the players have even more responsibility to set the right example and in the heat of the battle Crystal Palace seeing the semi-final ebbing away Roy Keane for whom every contest is a cup tie but he's off Keane is sent off Here. So Patterson, who, as I said a moment or two ago, goes up to the Football Association tomorrow. He's already passed 41 points. And he will... Now, Alan Smith's supposed to argue that case. But what can he say when this has happened tonight? Now, 
Southgate stays. Or does it? David Ellery. Yes. Well, he's given a decision, a free kick to Manchester United. Well, I think Gareth Southgate's a lucky boy. Certainly the tackle he put in him right in. I've seen people book for that type of tackle. I think it's a combination that's seen the end of Roy Keane tonight. First of all, the tackle, then the reaction. Sharp, a sure slip, wonderful save by Wilmot. Well, the end of the skirmishing and back to the skill from Sharp and from the goalkeeper. Well, yeah, it's great skill from Sharp here to control that difficult ball. Inside Shaw drills it near post. You would expect the goalkeeper to save that. Beautiful work by Manchester United against flagging Palace resistance. Irwin. Irwin, brilliant stop by Wilmot. The possession suddenly came to purpose for Alec Ferguson's team. Flying forward went Irwin. And when he gets forward, he's looking to pull it into his strong side. Not interested in play. He knows he's got lack of support, really, as well. He drives inside. Hits it super. It's Manchester United against Everton on May the 20th. A rerun of 1985 in 1995. The holders go back to Wembley. That's the first half goals here. Headers from set pieces from Steve Bruce on his return to the side after suspension. And Gary Pallister. It was a bit frustrating Sunday, but uh, tonight made up for it, and uh, to score a goal is just another bonus, really. But from your point of view, is that the perfect way to, to score a goal from a set piece like that? <laughs> well, it's always nice to score, and uh, it's a set piece what we often rehearse, and I've managed to stick a, stick a head on it. I thought I'd come out the first of all, but thankfully it's... I don't know, it's uh, no, that's it's straight straight in, there's no question <laughs> of that. Very nice. Gary, congratulations to you too. A, a strange kind of semi-final for you. Two bookings and two goals. Yeah, two bookings and two goals. I'm more pleased with the two goals, I think. Um, yeah, it was it was great to get on the uh, the end of another cross. Um, Sharp off the great ball, and then, uh, I'm trying to catch up with Bruce again. Is a case of anything he can do, you can do better. <laughs> Gary, you've been named the Littlewoods Pools Man of the Match. Steve, perhaps you might present it to him. Thank you very much. <laughs> Smiles all round as Manchester United go to Wembley hoping to retain the FA Cup and set a record of nine outright wins. They face Everton at the end of the road.